Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show you method 2 to solving quadratic equations which is using a formula. And the first question you're probably thinking is, well why do we need to know two methods? So I'm just going to show you this example quickly to show why I, method number 1 isn't going to work. So in method number one, we said that the first thing we do is we factorize and then we let both brackets equals to zero and we get our answer. If we try to do that, I'm going to have a go at doing that for this one, okay? So the minus six, we say what two numbers multiply to give you minus six. So it's going to be three and two, one and six. And we know because it's a minus that one has to be a plus and one has to be a minus. Now, if you go and put this into your uh, double brackets, you'll quickly notice that three and two, there is no way that I can make three x and two x where one is a plus and one is a minus add to give me minus two. So that won't work. And if I try it again for six and one, there's also no way that I can get that to add or subtract to give me minus two. So basically, factorization isn't going to work for this one. Now, the reason why it's not going to work is sometimes when we factorize, um, to get our roots and um, we sometimes won't be able to get them to be integers or rational numbers so in that regard we need something that's going to be able to help us where the answer is going to be a third um, or it's going to be a decimal. The good thing for us is if we have to use method 2 on the junior search they're generally going to write something after the part where they say solve blah 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 they'll say correct to let's say two decimal places so that's your big hint there that basically they're telling you that the roots are not going to be whole numbers therefore you're going to need to use the formula or the other way that they sometimes say it is to write it in third form so they might just say leave your answer in third form and we know third form is basically where we leave the square roots in or they might say something like leave the roots in the form um something like a plus or minus root b where a and b are elements of z or something like that so basically where they're basically telling you that the answer is not going to be an integer or a rational number that being a, a decimal a surge um, you're going to use the formula good thing for us the formula is found on page 20 of your formula tables so you don't need to know it off by heart you just need to know where to find it and how to use it and that's what i'm going to show you now Okay guys, so this is our first example. So we're asked to solve 2x squared plus 10x plus 7 equals to 0, correct to two decimal places. So again for this one, we're thinking, okay, we're being asked to solve this correct to two decimal places, which means my roots are not going to be uh, whole numbers. Therefore, I need to use method 2, which is the formula. Now, if you open up page 20 in your formula tables, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to see, they're going to say something like the quadratic equation written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. And then the values of a and b and c can be substituted into this formula. So x equals to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Like I said, you don't need to know that off by heart. It is on page 20 of your formula tables, but you need to know how to find out A, B, and C. So this helps you. So the value for A is always going to be the number stuck in front of the X squared. The value for B is always going to be the number stuck in front of the X. And the value for C is the number that's left by itself. The one thing that you need to be really careful for in these questions is that you take the correct sign as well. So let's pretend in our question this had been like minus 2, then b is equals to minus 2, not just 2. Okay, let's go back to our question then. So we have that the a is obviously going to be equals to 2 because that's the number in front of my x squared. The b is going to be equals to 10. And the c is the number by itself, which is 7. So what I need to do now is with those three um, values, I have to substitute them into my formula. The next bit, some teachers may not 
uh, emphasize, but I'm very strict with my students that they have to write it like this when they go to the next step, okay? So I write x equals 2. So wherever there was a letter, I'm now going to um, put in a bracket. Okay, so minus bracket for b, which is 10, plus or minus the square root. So again, there was a b there. I'm going to write down a bracket. b again is 10. Minus 4 bracket for a, which is 2. Bracket for c, which is 7. And that's all over 2 bracket for a, which is 2. The reason I ask my students to write it like this is because it avoids them making mistakes with minuses. Let's pretend that had been a minus 10. And if you look here, if I hadn't have put that into a bracket, I may have, may have just written down minus 10 straight away. However, if there's a minus in that bracket and there's a minus on the outside, a minus by a minus gives me a plus. So I just think this is like the foolproof way of doing it. Okay, the next part, again, teachers teach it differently. Some teachers tell you to go and do it straight into the calculator. I just